So in this video, I want to talk about the light novel series known as Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian, Volume 1. And what got me into this series is, of course, the first and second episode of the anime and the comedy romance aspect of it. What drew me in, of course, is the basic premise of a girl hiding her feelings in Russian, her expressing them, and it's kind of that almost like a, I wondered to myself as I was reading the volume, and even the main protagonist wonders is, why does she express her feelings in Russian? Is it kind of the thrill or the excitement of saying these really embarrassing, funny things? to him but in Russian so that he doesn't know what it is it's just like you know saying cutie and I want attention and all those kinds of things but it also allows her to express her feelings and in a sense it allows him to make some decisions that go in her favor because she expresses them not realizing that he understands them now of course I've wondered in this volume when is he going to actually confront her on that and say hey I understand you, I know everything you're saying, I don't think that's going to happen until the end of the series, where there will be some major revelation of them coming together as a couple, but I just wondered that kind of timeline. Then you've also got the relationship between him and his sister, and their relationship is kind of very interesting as well, and clearly I feel like the sister is, she's very evil in a comedy sense, and not in a bad sense, it's just kind of like she kind of comes up with all these cunning little plans to kind of almost torment the poor girl that he clearly likes and she clearly likes him but there's a lot of past in this and in the light novel it goes into a lot more detail of the past i will be doing cut content videos separately for the anime because there's no point me doing them in these videos because i'm going to be getting ahead of the anime so I just thought the interactions and the relationship between him and other characters is very intriguing. Like, there's clearly some pent-up issues going on with him and an inferiority complex going on, and he mentions that in the volumes, and that's what really drew me in. I was kind of gambling on reading this because, I'll be honest, I don't really want to read a light novel series that is boring and one-dimensional. If it's just a boring, lovey-dovey kind of romance, sure, that's a nice aspect to it, but I want something that has depth behind it, character development, and an interesting premise behind it, which is exactly what this series has. The main protagonist, male protagonist, clearly has some issues in his past, and he also liked this girl in his past that clearly represents the main female protagonist the the russian talking or she spoke russian she has the white hair it, it's it's these little things about his past that has intrigued me like i said the inferiority complex the way he's very lazy and unmotivated clearly is derived from his past and how he doesn't really want to do things because of that and then you've got her who she is extremely driven and focused and got this motivation to want to be president and she doesn't even care about having a vice president or someone next to her to help her she's just like yeah whatever i'll have someone by name but on paper but don't need them and i won't use them and so she's very focused on going her journey alone and being scared to ask for someone's help she's very prideful so there's also a component of her past as well when you add those two together they almost feel like a perfect synergy together and as i said their pasts make the story really 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 interesting and then you've got the sister she clearly has a past with her brother as well there's clearly something going on there and then you've got the whole school council as well there's stuff there the sister to the main female protagonist and her and how you could already see that she was testing him when they were doing some uh what i would call supply shopping and she throws a line at him and he just he has to play dumb he has to be very good at acting because that was when as soon as i saw the line that the sister the older sister put through at him i was like okay she's testing to see if he can understand russian because that's exactly what she did. She asked, she said, let's, let, you ready to go in Russian, and he just does the whole act. And that's another thing as well. He seems to have extremely good social skills or ability to maneuver himself around other people. That's what drew me into this series, seeing episodes one and two, and there kind of being a nice level to it. But the light novels goes into far, far, far greater detail. I, again, I'm not going to go into all the cut content, but 
some of these little things, of course, I need to talk about. So that's what drew me into the series. And I hadn't even started talking about what happened in the volume yet. That's what I mean. I, again, I'm, I wasn't trying to like hate on the series, so don't get the context there, but there are a lot of mangas and light novels out there that are romance driven with comedy, and they have interesting characters to a point, but they feel very one dimensional and they don't have a lot of layers to them. They have a couple of layers, but not quite the layers that I'm looking for. Like, if I'm going to read a light novel series, I want there to be something worth talking about. I want to be able to make a whole video separately to the light novel videos about certain events that are major and pinnacle to the character's growth. And I can already already see in just volume one that I can do that. And that's what draw me, draws me in because I love the thought process, the analyzing, the deep layers to it. And maybe I'm over-exaggerating things. Maybe I'm seeing something that's not there in the series. But I feel like there is something in this that is drawing my interest in it. At least in the first volume, I can see there are some hooks, there are some things that could be very interesting that will be delved into as the volumes go on. So I'm really curious to see where that goes. As far as what happens in the volume, I just want to do one note on it, is that this does look like the anime is going to be covering, well, one volume for free, well, Three episodes for one volume is what the anime looks like it will be doing. So I just want to point that out there for those that are curious on that component. But of course, the first thing is her starting her day at school, having this second year student come up to her, asking her out, being a bit of a playboy. She's just not interested. That happened in the anime. But what I thought was interesting is her drive behind what she finds interesting in people. She's very cold, very closed off. She has no real interest in getting close to people because of that thing that I mentioned before. She's very driven focused. She wants to do the best she can. She wants to do these goals, but people just aren't as focused as her and as driven as her. And so she seems to want to go at things quite alone, but she also seems to be interested in people that are very driven focused. She has an attraction to it, it seems. And when you see a main protagonist like him, you can kind of see where there's some parts of her that gets irritated at him, but then she's also very intrigued at when he does become focused. And that is something that the light novels goes into that does kind of look like content, but I feel like the anime will probably cover this at a later date, which is the backstory of how they first met, which I thought was really interesting because the backstory really explains what drew her in from not just an attraction standpoint, but also from a respect standpoint and a friendship standpoint. Because, again, I definitely think she's got a hardcore crush right away after that Haunted House uh, chapter, well, not really chapter, but arc, mini, 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 mini arc in the actual volume where she's explaining how she met him to her older sister. And so for those that don't know, yeah, there's a haunted house thing where she's doing a project, he's helping her, and the other classmates don't really want to help out as much as what she does. Like, she's very focused. She's like, no, nah, I'm going to do this on my own. You aren't going to bring to the standard that I want. That's what I mean. She closes herself off from people. And so he comes in and comes up with these solutions and motivations to get people on board to help her and get things done so that she doesn't have to do everything on her own because she seems to just be in that mindset where she just closes herself off, like I said again, and just does everything on her own. And to the point where she's hurting herself, she's stressing herself out, and she just isn't enjoying herself. But he comes in kind of knight in shining armor and has all these solutions. But he's very practical, very social type person. He's able to get people to do things. It's like a give and a take. And that was the first, that was when I noticed at the end of the volume, there's a soccer and baseball drama bit where the two clubs are like fighting each other over a debate on where they're going to train and she has to mediate it and she's all on her own and he just comes swooping in and he's just able to work it out instantaneously because he knows things about people, he listens, but he's very quick to understand the sort of the temperature of the room, who's in what position, who's the one that's disagreeing, who's the one that is agreeing and works with people. He's very social, he understands social ways of maneuvering is the probably not the best way to word it or to articulate myself but I just feel like he has this ability to analyze people and work with them and 
I guess in a way manipulate them to do what he wants. You could see that as positive or negative. That's why I say manipulate. It sounds negative, but I also see that as a positive because he's able to work people to do things in a way that benefits what he's trying to achieve, which can then end up helping everyone in the long term. He's not like an evil person, but he's just able to manipulate people to basically, yeah, do exactly what he desires. That's what I love about it. Now, that again is at the end of the volume. I just wanted to highlight the abilities that he has when it comes to his social skills, which is what really gets her interested in him. But as I was mentioning about the haunted house, he just comes in and he has a solution to these problems straight away and allows that haunted house and everything to be done masterfully. And it turns out to be this massive profit making for the, for the school. She's super happy and everyone wants to dance with her. And then he rolls in, grabs her arm, pulls her aside, and has a dance with her. And that's when you find out that she does that does ballet. In the opening song for the anime, you do see her doing a bit of ballet. I noticed straight away the opening song is super easy to analyze as well because there's so many interesting little snippets that they show you. Some opening songs or opening like things that they show for animes have a lot of fancy stuff that's in the anime, but not really analyzable. This is very analyzable. Like you could really dig deep into some of these things going on because the sister clearly wants to be the president. The main female love interest clearly wants to be the president. So there's gonna be a conflict between them and he's chosen to help the girl that he's he likes. So there's gonna be a conflict at some point between them. And this is what I mean, the first volume sets up a lot of premises of where the story is going to go, where the conflicts are gonna potentially come, rivalries. And I also have noticed that, yeah, the sister does tease her a little bit, but then if you look at the opening song as well, there seems to be a thing where she kind of is barracking or cheering on the love interest. It's not like she's that type of sister that wants to actually be with the brother it's not that weird type of romance i know a lot of people are memeing about that but i think that's just people seeing the anime and seeing some of the scenes from even the light novels and kind of assuming things while i think the sister is very much of a bit of a troll and so from that point onwards you then wonder okay well if there isn't a sister complex going on where does the sister stand on the romance clearly that she can see that's going on between those two and she she can tell that this girl and him, they do like each other, and she does ask as well, like when she's talking in Russian, she asks her brother, hey, what did she say? So the thing is that really did intrigue me is the fact that they are brother and sister, but they don't want people to know at the school, and there's a, there's a scene where they go out shopping, and they bump into her, and afterwards, like, they, they do some clothes shopping, there's a fun little embarrassing scene all there, they go out for some spicy food, she has a bit of ice cream, they talk about how she wants to be the president and how she kind of talks in Russian, how she wants him to also be by her side. But that isn't what intrigued me the most. It was, or make me laugh the most. It's the fact that the sister wears one of her brother's shirts and then calls it the boyfriend shirt. And of course, Elia doesn't know what a boyfriend shirt is until on the train when they get off the train at the same stop and she's questioning, okay, why are they getting off the same stop until she kind of thinks, oh, maybe it's because, you know, she... Her, well, his sister, which to her, she thinks they're just childhood friends because that's, of course, the story they fed her. But, of course, we're just going to refer them as brother and sister because we know that. She just thinks, oh, well, maybe she's just dropping off her stuff there because she can't take it to her parents' place. But then she's like, oh, what's the boyfriend shirt? She looks it up online and then freaks out and thinks, wait, are they dating? So there's a lot of misunderstandings and comedy aspects, and I really like that, that the comedy in it is just fun, but also kind of original as well, because one of the other things that you can notice with some romance comedies out there is they use a lot of the same jokes from like series to series to series, and it all just kind of feels very predictable. There are some really kind of fresh new comedy takes on misunderstandings that can happen and I think this sister does a really great job at being this troll-like character where she's very fun to play like she plays with people and I really like that but I also think she's very manipulative as well while her brother may be more manipulative in the sense of getting people to do things in a positive way I think she's willing to manipulate people to do things in maybe a more negative way and what made me drew to that conclusion is the opening song and her facial expression and being a little bit more darker I wonder if there's that kind of hidden darker side to her again of course 
you can read the volume itself and see all the scenes that play out, but I just think those are some of the interesting highlights that really stand out to me. As I said, there's the whole sort of backstory that she explains to her sister that really highlights how they first met each other. And as I said, she's not, she doesn't like people that are unmotivated and lazy. And that's the side that he shows a lot of the times, but she knows the other side of him, which is where I think she tries to draw that out of him a little bit. And that's what she finds attractive. And that's when she does the whole cute thing with the whole Russian stuff. So you've got, her conversation with that then you've also got another scene that also happens as well is where they go out for dinner after he assists the council and that's one thing the council is constantly trying to get him to join and he's very reluctant to join until the very end where he's like okay fine i'll join he's kind of like first he's saying no then he's kind of like, oh, i'll think about it then he's like all right i'll join but kind of like as like only a helping hand on paper and i think he's going to become more part of it as time goes on and he clearly has stated at the end of the volume that he's going to help Alia become president, but I feel like he'll play a more active role as the volumes go on because he's going to be drawn in by her. But they go out for dinner, and this is in the anime, but at the end of it, they don't show the scene where they're leaving and there's a drunk guy, and she ends up aggravating him because she kind of gets a little bit up in arms, a little bit defensive because someone, a, this drunk person kind of like has a go at her, about these kids being out too late and kind of has a go at about her hair and said, oh, you dyed your hair and that kind of stuff. She gets very defensive. So clearly there's some stuff in the light novels that are potentially going to come up where people do mock her for her hair, but those that also do love her hair as well because it's cute, attractive and all the rest. But of course, if there are people that think it's attractive, there are going to be people that think it's ugly as well because there are horrible people out there. And I think that's a good counter to it as well. But when she gets into this confrontation with this drunk person, my man himself comes in and saves the day. It shows that he can really control these moments. He's very good with getting people to behave in a way that he desires. And at the end of it, he's like, yeah, I didn't even know the person, but he pretends to know them. He pretends to be the son of a person that does business deals that did a wedding that he was part of and manipulates the whole situation masterfully done i really love the way again he has these social skills that really make him quite interesting so at that point you've basically as i've gone over i've gone over the opening scene where she's been confronted and confessed to you've got the teasing that goes in the classroom him sleeping in class the phone game thing where he does a gotcha game and he's playing the phone game and the character looks just like her and she kind of teases him and rush and going you know you're cheating all that kind of stuff then you've got the lunch talk him having friends there is some interesting stuff there where you kind of get an understanding of the relationship between him and his friends him and him playing dumb with his sister because that's where you kind of really realize it's like wait if they're brother and sister why are they playing dumb and that's something i'm still wondering and hasn't been explained in this volume why are they pretending to not be brother and sister then you've got this interesting relationship as well that you find out about the older sister, Alia, and her, again, not having friends. Even though everyone loves her and look, sees her as like an idol, she's not really friends with anyone. And then you've got the scene after that, which is the morning cleanup, the socks, the kinky. That's why I, I feel like she is quite erotic in a way like she's really into some interesting stuff like as far as kinky goes because one she says some really embarrassing stuff in russian and this is something the main protagonist wonders like why did she do this does she have like a like a bit of a fetish for like doing really outlandish things like the exhilaration of being like if i say something really embarrassing in public but no one can understand it it's that thrill it's like running down the street naked or something it's like the thrill of it all that's what i wonder and i i wonder if she'll get more ambitious with that as time goes on and she might start saying some really fun stuff to him thinking that hey he doesn't understand it and that's what i'm really interested in seeing further on and I feel like it will happen. That's my guess, is that as time goes on, as their relationship builds and grows, is she going to say some stuff that is far more embarrassing? And this is what I mean. That's why I said at the start. I feel like the revelation will come at the end where he'll be like, he'll speak in Russian. 
and she'll just be like, wait, you understood Russian all along. And then it's all just going to be these whole conversations are all that she's going to realize that she had. The singing, the cute thing. Like, even from Volume 1, she has said some pretty outlandish things already that could really make her feel embarrassed. But imagine the potential of where it's going to go for the future volumes. That's where I'm like, man, is this potential. And that's what makes the story interesting, the potential hooks of where this story can go. That's what I'm really, really looking forward to. Then you've got the relationship between him and the student council, them trying to get him to join. The dinner, the dream that he has, where he remembers this girl that he used to know. I think it's her. I think they knew each other and they don't remember and some major event is going to come out where he's going to remember, she's going to remember, and they're going to be like, oh, we liked each other as kids, because they did like each, like, if it isn't, so let's just say, you know, the, this, this girl that he met back then, she had a crush on him, and how do you know? Because she gave him a kiss on the cheek, they spoke in Russian, he liked her because he learned Russian just so he could talk to her. So there was clearly a little little crush that he had when he was younger, and that girl clearly liked him. But the thing is, is who is that girl? I think it's her. I, I know it sounds cliche, but I think it is a great cliche to have, because it's the revelation. It's not knowing that's so much important. Knowing if it's her is great. Because it's the the journey of getting to them finding out is what I want to find out. But I really do want to know, is it really her? And I do think it is her. That's my speculation. And then you've got his sister when they wake up and learning a little bit about his relationship with the sister and some of the guilt that he feels. There's clearly a much more deeper thing going on between them. And then the clothes shopping, the spicy food, the ice cream incident what drives her, the train station, the boyfriend shirt, which I think is hilarious, and then the getting supplies. That was something I mentioned before, where the the older sister does a bit of testing. I think she's actually a little bit more smarter than you realize, but maybe that's just me. And then the whole ending with the soccer and the baseball club drama, and that final thing of him going, fine, I'll join. And that thing of him saying, yes, I'm going to help you become president. Absolutely love the volume. Really looking forward to talking about volume two because, of course, I'm going to be reading it right after this. But it's just one of those where there's so much to talk about. And if I can go back to what I originally said at the start of the video, I don't, I would not be reading something if it didn't have the depth that I was looking for. Again, many mangas and light novels have depth, but not quite the depth that I'm looking for. I don't want to read something that's just kind of like one dimensional and everything is predictable to the point where you know how everything's going to turn out and you're not as excited about the end goal. With this, there's a lot of end goals that have got me very intrigued. As I've stated, all those relationship hooks and the when is, are they going to find out about their pasts and their relationship and the Russian stuff and all that, like, that's the wonder. So I'm very, very much excited about this series, looking forward to reading more, and I'd love to ask the question off to you. What do you think of Volume 1 of Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian? Of course, if I pronounce the word wrong, you can tell me in the comment section, but I'm probably going to say it wrong a million more times. But if you do want to support the channel and support my work on doing light novel content, because this stuff takes a lot longer to do than my normal content, I do have a Patreon. Definitely consider that out, and you can join the Discord server from that as well. So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.